Ashley Tibbetts here, financial advisor with Jazz Wealth Managers. Today, we're going to walk through exactly step by step on how to open a Roth IRA. You see these videos out there where they say to be rich in retirement, you need to open a Roth IRA, put money in and invest it this way. How do I do that? They don't ever say exactly step by step how to do it. So that's what we're going to do today. So you find yourself on the Jazz Wealth page, jazzwealth.com. You think, I've seen some of their videos. I've seen how Haley works, how Dustin works, how Eric works. These are my people. I want to work with them. So you go to jazzwealth.com and you look around their homepage. You want to look for a few things. What are they offering? Do they have any wine and wealth? Do they have any classes? Do they have anything else that they're offering you instead of just investing services? You want to look at their fees. Find the fees on the homepage. If you're not using Jazz Wealth, then it might be somebody else. Find their fees. We put them loud and proud right on the front page here, but find where they are. Now with us, we have one fee, one fee only, that's based on your total account size. So you have 100,000, you're getting charged 1% a year. Plain and simple. There might be some other hidden fees or commissions, things like that with other people. Make sure you know what they are and make sure you're good with that. All right, scrolling back up to the top, we're gonna click on invest now. There will be somewhere on the website or platform that you choose to start an application. They're gonna need to have things like your name, your email, your last name, your social security number, anything basic information like that so they can do a very quick background check on you. You don't see it happen, but they're gonna check for your information. Make sure you are who you say you are and that you're not on any kind of crazy list out there. This is where it's gonna ask you to make a username and if you're a US citizen or not. And I'll let you in on a little trick here. You don't have to be a US citizen. If your citizenship is not in the US, that's okay. As long as you're a US permanent resident, you are allowed to have an account in the US. Most brokerage firms won't allow you to have an account if you are not at least a US permanent resident. So you wanna make sure that that's at least the case. All right, so you keep filling out the basic information, your address, your phone number, your social. It's gonna start asking you about your employment status. Where does your source of wealth come from? Because as we know, if you have a Roth IRA, it has to be hard earned money. So where does that money come from? It's gonna ask you what the employer's name is, what line of business it's in, and what country is the business in? Where are you doing business? How do you make your money? It wants to know these things to open your account. It's gonna ask you a few things about this employment. What's the employer's name? What line of business it's in? Where the business is located? And how much do you make? If you have another source of income, it will have a chance to ask you that as well. Or if you're married and one of you is employed and one of you is unemployed, you put on there that you have partner or spousal income. Now, on the second half of the application, we're going to move away from more of the basic stuff. It's going to ask you compliance questions now. This is where the brokerage firms need to check that you're not going to be making any huge money moves that are going to sway the market. So if you're more than 10% of a shareholder or if you own a company that's related to the finance industry, they want to make sure you're not one of those people. Or if you are, you just have to fill out an extra little form. Then it will move into the politically exposed person section. This is going to be somebody that's a big face name. If you're related to them or you are that person, then they got to check on that too. Just a few compliance things they need to check on before you get started. Like I said, they're running that tiny little background check on you just to make sure you're not going to do anything you shouldn't be doing. Some firms might also ask you if you're going to make any wire transfers or check transfers. If you don't think you're going to do any, put one just to be safe, because if you one day decide you need to write a check and send it to your account or you make a wire to your account, they won't flag you and be like, whoa, she said she wasn't going to do any. Just put one just to be safe. Now we're at the point where it's going to ask what kind of account do you want to open? Is this a Roth IRA and a taxable account, a joint account? It's going to ask you at this point and if you're starting fresh or if you're transferring from a different firm. Now to the most important part of the application is setting up a beneficiary. Just don't keep going if you don't have the information ready. Stop here, go get the information you need, and then put the beneficiary in. If you wait until later, you might forget. Please just make sure you put a beneficiary in your account. 
Okay, now on the last little section here, we're gonna ask about you. This is kind of just some general information we can gather about you, how far you are from retirement, what kind of investing do you wanna do? Are there any legal constraints that you're not allowed to invest in these things? Or do you just feel really strongly about this and don't wanna invest in it anyways? Just know, at least on our side, this is not set in stone. If you select growth as the way that you want to be invested and we decide later on, we come to the agreement that maybe moderate growth is a little bit better for you, that's okay. It's not set in stone. It's always going to change anyway. So just know that this is kind of a very basic understanding that we can get of you before we even talk. Now for the last step here, we just have to give you some paperwork on the legal side. You might see something like a client relationship summary or and a customer agreement. From the client's perspective, I think the client relationship summary is gonna be a little bit more important in this scenario because it's telling you exactly who you're working with, the services that they're gonna provide and the fees that it might cost you. This is where it will tell you word for word what authority you are giving this advisor over your account. And once that's done, you did it. Your account's open and you're gonna get some follow-up emails on what to do next. Now, every firm is different, but on our side, we'll send you an email and we're gonna take the time to talk to you to figure out where our next steps are for you personally. If you're more of a DIY kind of person, this is where you would start getting invested, setting up a bank link, getting money into the account, and then going to pick those investments. It's a little bit easier if you have a professional helping you out with it, but that's your next step for those that are doing it yourself. If you're thinking you're not much of a DIY person and you wanna work with Jazz Wealth, there'll be a part two to this video showing you what exactly we do next. So you have no doubts and no questions about how we roll as a company, and I hope you choose Jazz.